Now, nectar is made specially for the purpose, and it's costly. And there are some flowers that get away without producing nectar, like this orchid. This is a hammerhead orchid. It mimics an, a wasp, and the wasp comes and thinks that it's a female wasp and tries to mate with it. There's a very spectacular hinge there that you'll see the use of. There are the pollen sacs. There are the pollinia, and there's the, the hinge, and there's the fake female. Now, look what's happened. The male bees come and been dashed onto the pollen there, going back and forth on that hinge, banging away. And sooner or later, the pollen sacs will come off onto his back. There he is now with his back there, and there are the pollen sacs on his back. And he flies off, and then he'll mate with another flower, and just the same thing will happen. This is a bucket orchid, an even more ingenious trick it uses. It's dropping fluid into the bucket there. This is an attractive fluid. There's a special kind of green bee which is attracted by that fluid. It comes to the flower, and it falls into the bucket. There. It's trapped there. The only way it can get out is through a special hole that's provided for it by the orchid. There's the hole. It's the only way out, and the bee has found it. It's forced out through that hole, and on its way out, there is the pollen sac waiting. So the only way through is this little passage. There are the pollen sacs, and it's going to get scraped off onto the bee's back on the way out. Now, that same bee, when it finally escapes with the pollen sacs on its back, is going to fly off and it will eventually come to another bucket orchid, and exactly the same procedure will be repeated. It'll nearly drown, it'll find the hole, and on its way out, the pollen sacs will, in this case, be scraped off, and they will fertilize the next orchid. So this is deceiving bees, but again, using their wings to carry pollen about.